Hey there, welcome to volume 2. This time around we're going to tackle some tips regarding detailing, gizmo deformers, cleaning up shapes, and even more hard surface brushes and techniques. Like last time, this video is divided into chapters and timestamps, so you can just pick and choose what interests you. You can also go to my art session store page where you can grab my ZBrush user interface along with all of my decimated projects if you want to take a closer look at them. It's all for free. Now, there's a lot of content to go through, so let's jump in. Alright, so we're going to kick things off with the group loops function and how to you utilize that to create some details in your robots or tech panels or walls and so on. Just going to start with masking this cube here and we're going to take away uh, from the back and then to navigate down to the group loops function is in under geometry, then edge loop and then you have the button over here. I don't ever change the settings, I just uh, use the default one. But before we press the button, we have to uh, press Ctrl W to give that, uh, get a polygroup here. Then we have to hold Ctrl and Shift and then folk, uh, solo that polygroup we just made, that little detail we were going to make. And then with it soloed like this, we just press the groups loop uh, thing here. And I can see how everything appears again. And now we zoom in here, everything is kind of smoothed out, the little hard edges we had. And I can see if I zoom a little more, you can see we have like four polygroups in total. And what that means, if I press W to get the pivot, and then hold control, and then press the green polygroup, everything else gets masked out. And then now we can just drag this to extrude it in or extrude it out. I usually just use it to extrude stuff in. And when you do that, you can see how clean it is. It's like a really clean way uh, instead of just, just masking things and then punching it in, you can. this is like a lot cleaner way of working in that kind of regard. And then beforehand, we could, you could do a lot more like a detailed masking, a different one to get like a different effect. And then you can also, if you hold Alt and drag the pivot down like this, you can, you know, do a different kind of detail. So it's like a little bit sloped this time around. And now we're going to continue with the group loops thing to create like a hard surface frame or railing. You can choose what you do with it. We first mask the top of it like this and I'm just going to give it a polygroup. Isolate it, uh, press the group loops thing like we did earlier. And then um, hold control with the pivot active like that. So everything else is focused. And then what I want to do is I want to hold alt and press the reset orientation and the, uh, the location of it. And then I kind of just want to shrink this little thing here. So now you can see if I do like this, uh, we're going to have like a little, like this little sci-fi detail that we just created like this. And then what I want to do is I want to focus just the innermost polygroup. So I hold control shift, press it like that. Then we want to navigate up to the stroke menu. I want to go to curve functions. And in that area, we want to press these two buttons here, polygroups, increased edges, and then we want to press the frame mesh button with the border active. So when that happens, you can see we have like a really subtle kind of dotted line effect around the border. And what that means now, we can, you, can, you can either continue in solo mode or you can hold Control Shift and just press the canvas like that. And then we can get the curve tube brush like this. And then it depends on the draw size, like the size of the curve. So I'm just going to go for 23, but you can, you know, go wider, you know, it's, this is a bit too large, but we can, I'm going to go 20. Then when I press it, you can see how now if we were to do some kind of detail on a robot, for example, you can see how this could be really cool for framing something in to add even more level of detail. So it's quick, it's a really quick and efficient way of doing that. And then uh, to take it even further, we could, uh, I'm just going to have to get here and delete the stroke itself. And then I'm going to go to uh, split and split on mass points. So now you can see that we have this split up and you can see the railing by itself. I'm going to see this like that. So now instead of having it like a framing thing, we can just uh, drag this up. And then if we do this, you can see how it's a really quick way of creating a uh, kind of sci-fi framing around some kind of object. And it's really, you know, Powerful in that regard of just uh, just really quickly when you're sketching something out, and then you can also navigate to uh, deformation palette and go to the inflate, and then you can inflate this if it was too small or you want to shrink it even more. 
let's say you did this group loops thing that we did earlier. You masked some, some nice detail out like this and then punched it in. And you kind of just want to take it a little bit further. You can utilize the new bevel brushes uh, that came with the latest version. If you press B and the B again, you can see they're highlighted up here in the corner, A and F. I'm going to start with bevel arc and I'm going to use bevel arc in this corner to exaggerate the um, small bevel we have here. And normally the brush works like this. So you, when you, you have to drag it out and this is like the area that you want to affect. And then you go back over it repeatedly to get that little bevel. And you can also use Alt, Alt Alt to get like a reverse effect on it, on it. And that's what we're going to do here. I'm going to take a draw size like this, and then hold Alt, and then take this area here. And you can see already, just by quickly going over it, we have a lot of a more exaggerated bevel going on than previously. And this is really handy when you just want to change things after you have used the group loops function or are doing some detail work. And then sometimes uh, if the draw size is too large, uh, it may start affecting areas from the back. You can either enable back face masking on it, like this, and then it stops, or you can just uh, mask the backside of it while you're uh, working with it, like this. And then you can just refresh the Dynamesh afterwards and you have this nice little detail. You can also use the bevel flat brush, uh, like in this area, holding Alt, and you can see how we got, like, I kind of got this uh, sharper instead of the more softer curve. And we can do it still here just by using it normally. And you can also just drag over this outside area here. And you can just see how quick we can change these shapes. And it's really nice um, afterwards. Um, let me see if we can do something here. Yeah, sometimes the mat brush messes up, but don't worry. You can just press Ctrl C, Z. And there, can I do a little polish there? You can see how the uh, the object looks a lot more interesting just by quickly doing a, another extra pass over it after you've done the group loops. So I recommend experimenting with these brushes to get your desired effect. And then if we take the shape and break it even further apart with more of the bevel brushes and then combining it with some cleanup uh, with the planar and the clip curve brush. I'm gonna select the clip curve brush over here for me and the planar brush uh, later actually. Um, so if we just start with the bevel flat brush again, like earlier, I'm gonna take this and just normally do it like this. If you're in the middle of a shape like that, and instead of going all the way through, you can see how nice that goes. But if you just take the middle of it without masking, uh, you can see how it's kind of wobbly. And to fix that, I usually just hold control, uh, mask that area. Then I just hold control, shift, drag the clip curve. And you can see if we have it the gradient on the right side like that, it's going to fix the shape. So it's hard. It has hard edges again. And we can do it on this side as well. Um, if you want to skip this like all together, you can just mask the, the cube beforehand like this. And then you can use the bevel flat brush and then you can do a little bit like that. It has, yeah, you can get like even better shapes by doing that too. So definitely do that. And you can also utilize the bevel arc brush doing the same thing like here. You can see how nice this looks. It just it kind of breaks up the shape like that. And let's say sometimes you have like an intersection, like if I, just uh, use the clip curve to kind of extrude this uh, little part out here. I can do it like that, refresh the Dynamesh. And let's say um, you are utilizing the, um, for example, the bevel arc brush and you are going through here. You can see how it kind of ruins this edge over here. You can then, like earlier, we can just mask this and then use the clip curve brush to fix that area. You can see how nicely you managed to fix it. And then you can always use the planar brush as well uh, in the same regard. If I, if you have the area like that, you can always just get a flat area, hold Alt with the planar brush. And you can see if I go over the area like that, you can see how quickly it managed to fix it instead of using the clip curve brush. Um, I would rather want to use the clip curve brush uh, when this thing happened, like over here. So now you can see how this kind of worked like that. All right, now we're going to tackle Bevel Pro, and we're going to kind of reverse the effect of it. Instead of 
making it subtract, we're going to just create a cage from it. And you can use that in creating some kind of cage around an engine or an armor part, something like that. So I'm just going to start with a cube, press Dynamesh, just random whatever re resolution works. Um, usually it's a good idea to use zero measure uh, for it because you can only polygroups for this. Uh, I'm personally just going to use uh, knife curve brushes. I'm going to use knife rect here. Take a little bit of the corner here, and I'm going to take knife curve, take away some of the sides, uh, kind of like that. And when, I, when we do that, we get instant polygroup. So I'm going to take one from diagonal here, kind of like this. And you can see if I press uh, Shift F, we have the multiple polygroups. And now we can kind of jump in to Bell Pro, which is you can find over here. And when you open it, there's a new tab. And there's only two settings we're going to fiddle with this time around. Let's so say a little bit of a jagged edge over here. So I'm just going to use uh, polys per groups here, like a really low amount, just to get rid of it. And let that run. And you can see this is going to connect a little bit more from that. I mean, you don't have to do this, but it's nice to just have a little bit of a connection point there. You can tweak the bevel amount. Um, the red lines, like the thickness of it, depends, like controls how thick they're going to be. So it's like a visual thing here. I'm just going to dial it back a little bit because we don't need it to be have it super ultra thick like that. And I'm just going to press OK. OK, so now we got this back here. And by default, it's going to have live boolean on. I'm going to, I have it on here in my custom user interface. Usually it's up here in the default UI. So I'm just going to turn it off. And then we're going to press this button here, take everything to the default. And then I'm going to solo this. You can see we kind of got this cage working with you. It's really clean and nice. So I'm just going to do run the dynamic is still active because it's from the same created from the same sub tool and now you can see I'm, uh, we added dynamesh to it and i'm just going to do um, inflate to get it like this so it doesn't really matter if it's that you know uh, messy like this it's just a concept really so don't worry about that we can now use the clip circle center for example to put like a if I do it like this, you can see how we have kind of added like a circle into this now. I could do it in this area here as well. And if it works, we do it like just perfectly. We can see like it don't have to clean up a whole lot of it. You can have this kind of nice little joint here. And then you can also use the clip curve. No, I mean the knife rect, for example. And that one is great. If you hold alt, no, I mean just use normally, take things away and you can <clears throat> And just quickly change the cage from what it used to be, uh, from what you generated, and generate something even cooler from what you have. So, something like this, or take more from this angle here. So you can see how quickly we can just reiterate, and then you, can, you know you can see it's kind of like a little, we generated this small cage that envelops the. Uh, the box we had earlier and now we can like take even more from that and even use the bevel flat brush over here on it and uh bring weld there you go and just by combining all these tricks you can see how quickly we can get this advanced looking shape now i'm quickly going to show you how i created the vent detail on one of my projects so if we grab the same cube we had earlier and let's just say we mask this area here and that's the that's the area where i want the vent to be I'm going to control W, give it a new polygroup, use the group loops things that we did earlier. I'm going to select the other polygroup, and then I'm going to use the inflate tool to inflate it in like this. And then I'm going to take away and hold control and then invert the polygroups. I'm going to do an extract function. Uh, let's do uh, down here. I'm going to do uh, 0 0.01 like that. Extract, accept. And we have this extract over here. I'm going to hold Control Shift, just select one side and delete the other, delete hidden. And then what we're going to do from here is that we are going to do the zero measure, zero measure, and we are going to do uh, just zero measure target polygon one. And let's quickly do that. Let it run there. You can see we have nice and even quads here. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go to C plugin, UV master, unwrap. Don't have to do anything else. Then how to create it is basically the surface noise tab. And I personally just pr press this button over here and we get another window popped up. And then I press UV and then 
before we start fiddling with any settings, I press noise plugin. And then I go to, there's a lot of options here, but the, the option that we want is a spheres one. Just press that. You don't have to change anything. I'll just press OK. And then now we want to take the noise scale down. We want to take the plugin scale to the left here. So you can see now you can see the dots coming in. Let's do it like this. And then we want to do the strength. We're going to take a mix basic noise, take that down to zero. And strength, we want to keep it like all the way up. So you now you can see the went detail coming in here. Uh, just like that, we press OK. And then before we continue, I kind of just want to do a crease edges border. And then I want to press Ctrl D for about four times. <clears throat> and then we, so the trick that I usually do is I do mask by noise instead of applying it to mesh. So mask by noise, I press Ctrl W, select the red polygroup. So we have the holes like this. Maybe we can do, before we uh, advance, we can do one more division and then mask by noise. So you can see now, Ctrl W, do it like this. Then we go delete hidden, take away the subdivision first, then delete hidden. And you can see it like this. Then we go to geometry and we go to edge loop and we just press panel loops with the default setting, panel loops. There you go. Now we've got some thickness back and that looks pretty good. Sometimes there's some errors, so you have to maybe redo it or something like that, but it's totally fine. Maybe it's okay to cover this up as well. Just do it like this and uh, do a clip curve quickly just to cover this area. And you can see it's just, it's nice when you're concepting or just roughly sketching something in. It's really quick and uh, yeah, maybe try something like this. Let me. Yeah, so it's nice to kind of just add that extra level of detail with the ventilation system. All right, so now we're going to jump into some nice gizmo tips. And the first thing I kind of want to cover in that regard is the deformist menu. And there's some things in there that I tend to use a lot for creating some sci-fi details. And to access that menu, you have to press W and press the cork icon like over here. Uh, the first thing I kind of want to cover is the extender. So with this little detail here, if I press extender, I tend to use this a lot when I'm doing cylinder, cylindrical kind of details, because if I drag this cone over here, you can see how it extends. And now we have a totally different look. And this could be a part of some kind of an engine inside of something. And it's quite handy when you do want to do something like that. And then you can take it even further by using clip curb and other detailing uh, tips to uh, create an even unique shape. And then the next thing after that is if I press the cork icon again, and then we use the taper. So the taper basically um, uniques, uniquely tapers it in a in the direction you want to you wish it to do. And I feel like it works best with cylindrical object, objects as well. So you can use the cone, the orange one. So then if you take the exponent one, the white cone here, you can see how you can change how the effect works. So if you drag it all the way towards the object, it's going to taper like this. And then it's basically just what you're looking for, right? And then let's say you have this tube detail and you kind of want to bend it to create like a rebreather function on a helmet. Then you want to jump into the deformers menu and uh, bend curve is what you're looking for. Um, usually bend curve start with the curve resolution of lower than this and symmetrical symmetry off. And so it basically starts off like this. And what I usually I don't really change a lot of settings besides the orange cone and the green one. And the orange cone is the curve resolution. You can crack it up to a lot of dots. And the dots are basically just how much of a control you want to have over the object on how much you're going to want to bend it. And then the green cone is symmetry on and off. And I'm going to put yes for this one. So now if I take, take the outermost dot and then drag it like this, now you can see how quickly we could arrange this into an area onto some kind of a helmet, something like that, to uh, create this uh, rebreather tube. So it's quite handy for that. And we can always just on the fly add more resolution. Sometimes it might reset, but usually yeah, now it held on to it. So you can always just on the fly keep adding more to it. Then you can also hold shift if you want to try to snap things kind of like this. So definitely try this out. It's a great deformer. And then it's also a good idea to look, take a look at the flatten one, which is over here. On the left. So basically what it does, it explains itself. You, you, you can just flatten your object. It's a nice thing to, if you want to re basically reset an area kind of like this. Sometimes though, it can 
create this kind of effect. And if you need to clean it up, you can always just grab the knife curve and then just drag it over an area like this. And you can see how it takes it away. All right, I'm not sure how well known this tip here is, but it's regarding when you want to scale something uniformly uh, with the pivot tool. So let's say I'm going to mask this area here, and then I'm going to give it a polygroup, do the whole group loops things we have been doing for the entire of the video. So let's say here, like some, like let's say you want to take this unmasked area here and you want to scale it uniformly into the middle to shrink it, and then like. Normally you would just do it like this. You would reset the pivot, get in here, do it like this, and there you go. I mean, this is a relatively clean way to do it, but let's say you have the uh, pivot somewhere up here and it's a little bit offset like this. And you know, if you would try to do it like that, it wouldn't work. What you can do if you're feeling lazy and you just want to do a quick shortcut, you can hold control and hover over the scale icon here in the middle. And when you hold control and then drag it to the left and you scale it, you can see how uniformly it's going to scale it down. There was no nothing on the left or right that was being distorted when you scale it down. Um, this you sometimes this may distort some hard edges, but that's just some simple cleanup that you will have to do uh, on your own to fix that. But if you feel like you want to be careful about it, you can continuously do this um, scale method like this. But uh, sometimes it has some cleanup with it, but it's always relatively quick. So definitely keep this in mind, this tip, if you want to scale things uniformly. This is a really neat trick that I use a lot in my work. So let's say you want to do like a ventilation pattern or just some kind of repeating pattern that's supposed to be a part of some kind of an object or an armor piece. So what I'm going to do here with the object is that I am going to have the pivot open like this. Then it just you choose the axis and then when I hold control, and drag on some kind of axis, like now I'm going to use the Y axis, for example. And then if I want to drag it out like this and then let go of control and then continue to drag it up here, you can see the object is going to repeat itself. And you can control how much of a gap is between it, but you have to do that in the beginning. But um, if I re do this again with a wider gap between objects, then we just need to do the same thing. Um, if you hold control, like this, then we just, while holding control, we decide how much of a gap we want. Like, let's say we want this wide of a gap. And then let go of control, and then I just continuously keep dragging it up. So it's a really neat trick to quickly create patterns. So keep this in mind when you're doing some kind of sci-fi detail for your work. Now it's time to cover some nice tricks for when you're transitioning from sketching to when you want to detail your hard surface work. When I'm sketching something, I like to add a little bit of grayscale color to my work, so it helps me to see properly what I'm working with. And it also helps me later down the process to break the piece apart, put detailing pieces individually. So basically, I have this rough sketch here, and now I want to move from sketching to detailing. What I usually do is I use Mask by Polypaint, and to find that, in, you have to go to Masking, and then Mask by Color, and then you have the button. Mask by Polypaint. And what that does is it opens another window, and then you can to pick this uh, color here, and then you can hover over what you want to focus on. And you can see when I ho hover over the light area, so it all gets masked. And then the black area, you can see that now it's the only thing that's going to get masked. So I want to focus on that, and then you can focus on the tolerance if it um, if it's taking too much of some area that you don't like. So definitely play with that. And if I press OK now, you can see that I have a new polygroup. I just have to press Ctrl W to apply the masking. And now what I can do, what I usually do when I, after this 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 done, I press Ctrl Shift and I highlight the group. Then I just go to split and split hidden. And there you go. Now you got the helmet separate uh, like this, and then you got the little uh, that little mouth guard that we had separate. All right. So now you have a one-sided uh, plane and you want to give it some thickness so you can continue to work with it and take it to a whole new level of uh, detailing. So what I usually do is I go to geometry and edge loops, and then you have panel loops over here. And what I, if it, if the mesh gets too um, polished after it, I take usually the polish down to zero, and then I play sometimes with the thickness to see you know if it works. Like I think. Just by using the default, this works. But if you want to make it even thicker, you can do it like that. Sometimes it may distort your mess. So 
I usually just go for maybe something like this. Uh, there you go, you got the thickness and it didn't distort the mesh. And then I, what I do sometimes is I just do uh, pick the polygroup like that and I just drag the inner part kind of like this. So we got a uh, thickness kind of like that. And then I just smooth out stuff and try to fit it into where what area it was supposed to be in. Kind of like here, take the move brush, kind of like that. So now you can see how, um, yeah, basically you can just continue sketching it, fixing it, detailing it, because now it's not going to affect anything else because it's separate. There's also another method, which is nice to keep in mind. I'm going to quickly mask with poly paint and select the green area here and going to give it another poly group. And I'm just going to do the same thing we did earlier. This time around, I picked up some of the uh, colored lights that we had. That's fine. I'm just going to take it like this and do split in. So now we have this separate. And instead of doing the panel loops thing, because sometimes it can mess up stuff, um, I would like to uh, go to uh, geometry, uh, modified topology, and close holes. And when you press that, it just closes the hole and gives it another poly group. Now I can just hold control with the pivot, select that uh, poly group like this. Then you can just give it thickness manually, kind of like that, and then continue to uh, clean it up with maybe H polish with backface masking or something like that, and then do it like this. overall poly is there, so they can have it separate and you can try to get it in back into the area that you had it in. And now you can just continue to detail it. Like I talked about earlier with the grayscale polygroups, if you're having trouble to select them with the mask by poly paint, if they're too similar in color, then you can always navigate down to poly paint and you can press adjust colors. And from there, you can play around with, uh, like what I did here is I played around with the RGB contrast, red, green, and blue. And you can see now uh, that it's blue and more purple and a lighter here. And it's a lot easier to um, grab colors this way. So if I press OK, get the colors applied. And then I'm gonna do mask by poly paint. So now I should do this, then I decrease tolerance down here. Press OK. So now I kind of managed to grab Grab it like that. So definitely play around with that if you feel like the grayscale colors are not working for you. Okay, so the first thing I kind of want to cover in the brushes uh, section is uh, adjust last and thick skin. And I'm going to utilize one of Mike Nash's uh, straight line brushes for this uh, demonstration. And basically, you know, the brush looks like this uh, normally, but um, there's a new, a really handy feature for if you're doing some hard surface uh, line work or something like that, that you can use uh, adjust last. Where you can find that, you can find that in the stroke menu and just immediately over here. What that essentially does is that the last stroke, you can change the kind of like the direction, like uh, it's going to punch in or out, and you can change the intensity of it. And this is quite useful if you are just punching in that one little detail and you just need a little bit of an extra touch to it. But let's say you want to adjust last to affect multiple strokes. So what you need to do then is that, let's say you have three identical details in an area and you have three multiple strokes for it. Then you have to go back in the history and then press control uh, before you do those strokes like this. Press control over here. So you can see we have, this is grayed out now. So now if you use adjust last, you will affect all of them at the same time. And then thick skin is over here. You can find it over here and thick skin. I have it here in my custom user interface along with just last. But um, if you want to keep a consistent look over your brushes, thick skin is basically just the overall uh, mesh that you have selected. So if I take the thickness down to the maybe like this, you can see now the brush is tiny, it's a lot smaller, and it's very consistent along everything. You can also squeeze out a lot more detail out of just one single brush and just change how it behaves, especially if it has a different alpha, kind of like this one. Uh, if I do a little bit more, kind of like this. So normally it behaves uh, without thick skin, this brush behaves like this. But with it on and various different sizes of thicknesses, you can see how it, cha it changes dramatically. Now if I do this, just all about really experimenting and see 
how the, the brushes kind of change. I can see that how this one works. This is kind of like now like a small softer detail. So you can see how all of them kind of get the different kind of shapes on them. And now kind of the next thing is kind of like a follow up to um, volume one. Uh, I covered the move brush and the snake hook brushes. And if you take, for example, the move brush and you use back face mask on it, then you can extend surfaces like if you needed some, just that little extra to connect some uh, areas together then you can use, use back face mask like this. But uh, like we covered is that if you just use it like this, it doesn't go like if you wanted to go through the whole mesh. You, uh, it doesn't really do that. But if you really need it, that to happen, you can go navigate brush and depth. And over here, you can select infinite depth. And what that essentially does is that it's going to make it so it's going to go through the whole mesh and it's going to extend it uniformly if I have uh, X turned on. So like this. So you're going to cover a whole lot more area like this. So uh, it's a good thing if you feel like you need it, then you can have it. And then the uh, infinite depth is selected by default on the move infinite depth brush. And I did cover that briefly in volume one, but essentially what is good to combine it with is AccuCurve. And basically what that does, instead of it doing like a broader um, area, you do AccuCurve and then it's going to be like a going to behave like a needle, so like this. So this is quite handy if um, we have a like a sharp edges here and you just needed a little bit more of a uh, kind of like this. So it's nice to uh, create some sharp lines with it when you're sketching. And I use it all the time uh, when I'm sketching something out and I need to uh, have this area kind of like this and it's nice to uh, yeah, navigate it kind of like that. So you can see how the effect has it has kind of gives it a, like a hard touch while you do it. So it's quite effective at its job. Okay, and then kind of using the knife curve brushes along with B radius is a quite good way of doing like sci-fi tack panels. And uh, let me show you how to do that. So I'm gonna use the knife curve. And if you hold Control Shift and then hold Spacebar while you do so, you get this little menu here. And what you want to press is B radius. And then it depends on the brush size. Uh, I want to have a really small one for this because we want to do like really intricate uh, slices so we can do panel work. So if I drag with a knife curve, then double tap Alt, it's going to get a sharp curve. And then if you let go of Shift, it's going to stop snapping like this. So it's going to be smoother. Then I hold Alt while I let go. And you get this really nice uh, panel cut here. And what you can do to put, pull this even further is if you go here, Auto Groups, and you select this group over here, get this going, kind of like that. Then you can quickly uh, cut your panels and uh, cr uh, create this kind of layered effect of uh, sci-fi detail. And you get, this does work with a lot of stuff and you can just keep going ham. Uh, if you just use it normally, it's going to do this. So you want to hold Alt while you do it. So it's going to do this kind of cut. Then you can do it with a knife rectangle. And that's quite good if you want to do like a really uh, rectangular cut like this. Um, it's really effective. So I'm just going to do auto groups again. Select that uh, with the control function. There you go. Then you can just navigate it like this. So you can see how quickly we can just get these nice details in here. And you can just use it with all of the uh, knife brushes kind of like this and also the circle one if you needed to do some kind of like uh, organic kind of line you can see this so definitely test it and it's you can also use different sizes so if you want a bigger size you can use it like this and continue to make it even larger and you can of course just press alt once to get like a, a um, more of a um, smoother curve so um, you can see how effective this is in just slicing our panels to get this nice details in. Okay, now I'm going to go over some hard surface brushes that are really handy when you're concepting and you really want to get your ideas down there. So the first thing I kind of want to cover is trim hole. 
uh, in my user interface, I have these three brushes I'm going to cover in my user interface like this. But if you want to find them for yourself, you can navigate to your light box, go to brush, so you can find trim over here, and then plane arrow over there. So if I select, for example, if we start with trim hole, and so what that actually does is that it's nice if you just want to punch a little like hole in here, and it just continuously moves it down. So you can do these kind of details when you're sketching out like screw holes or something like that. Uh, you can also, what, which is basically my favorite thing about this, is when I'm sketching something and I want like a cylinder at an angle. So what I usually do is I first dig in normally, then I hold Alt and dig back out. And you can see how just so quick we got this nice detail here. You can just do it from any angle. Like let's do a smaller one here and then dig it out again, kind of like this. So you can see how basically how um, many variations you can like work with this guy. And it's great because it kind of does this, makes this seem, so it look, make, makes it look like it's, this is like an inner working kind of sticking out. And next up is planar cut. And that basically is a more aggressive planar brush. So you see how if I would want to clean this area here, it's a little bit uh, soft. You can use the planar brush, but default, it's not going to do a lot. So you would want to hold Alt to do this to use the planar brush. But the planar cut basically has a limit to it. So it's going to dig in and just to flatten the surface very aggressively and just going to it has that limit, so it's not going to go even further than just a small. So if I do it here, you can like dig in some kind of plane, you can do sort of a hard cut in your helmet or something like that. And then it's also nice just to clean up like these kind of areas um, just really quickly. So it's more, it's kind of like a more aggressive uh, plane up brush, basically. So it's nice uh, if you have some wobbly areas, you want to kind of quickly uh, clean them up. And just nice for sketching, generating those ideas. And the next one after that is the trim front. And that one is basically, it is camera sensitive. So it depends. It's kind of like if you want to flatten an area and create some kind of angles from it. Uh, and it depends on the camera angle that you have. Like if I go from this angle, it's just going to take a little bit in. So you can create these kind of smaller kind of uh, attachment uh, details. and. It just depends on how you want to use it, really. Like here, you can create this kind of an area, or you can see just how it works from the angle like this. Uh, so it's basically how it works. So it's nice to punch in those kind of like division details. Like if you want to do like a little bit of a uh, breakup in the surface. Um, so I kind of like, just like to use it for that to generate some details kind of like this. And yeah, basically it's just kind of like small attachments. I used it here, generate this area. And it's just kind of like a feel thing. You kind of just need to grab a hold of this brush and kind of test it for yourself. But just remember it's kind of camera sensitive. So another powerful feature is uh, group change points. And that's down here in polygroups and groups change points. So it's very useful if I take, for example, the layer brush and I change it to drag dot with an alpha. So when I drag something out, it's like this. So let's say you are punching in some holes for screw details or anything else in particular. What this button is going to do is that it's going to give whatever change to the mesh you do with the brush a new polygroup. And you can continue punching it down, and then it's going to give a unique polygroup to whatever you uh, do. But if you want to keep consistent polygroup to it, you can uh, do um, an open circle like this. So now uh, every thing I put down here is going to have the same blue polygroup. But you can also, when you're punching things down, if you want to keep it consistent without fiddling with the uh, closed or open holes, you can just do this, hold shift and press it down, hold shift. So you can see now we keep, even though we have a closed circle with this random polygroups each time, we we are keep having a new polygroup, uh, the same polygroup, sorry. So yeah, so now I just press normally and you can see how it got a purple one. But let's say it's too tedious for you to uh, keep pressing the button like that for every detail because you let's say you have a really complicated helmet and you just want to do this all at the same time then you have to just go back in your history before you start placing things down like we did earlier hold control 
press that time in history, you see it's grayed out like this, and then group change points. You can see how all of the polar groups change now, so it's all consistent. So you can do this, and then what I usually do if I'm doing these kind of details, then I use maybe mask them, extract them, and then from the extract you can do even more detail onto those little details that you were doing. Now I kind of want to go over the last tip for volume two. And that one is uh, just an extra to what I covered in volume one. So basically that's in, uh, works with IMM brushes. So when you're dragging out an IMM, it doesn't conform to the surface. Let's say you have a circle like this and you want to punch in some kind of detail that you want to do. Uh, the, uh, you can see the inset mesh doesn't conform to it. Unless you want to do that, then you can use um, projection strength, which you can find in brush, and then you navigate down to modifiers, and then you can see projection strength is here in the middle. So let's say you crank that up, it's default by zero, so if you crank it up to 100, you can see now if I drag this again, you can see how kind of the brush gets distorted, but at least now the circle is conforming to it, so now you can have a perfectly punched detail into your mesh. And let's say you have, you don't have the primitives, but you have a really a lot more detailed kind of part to it, then you can pick IMM machine parts, for example, then that might be helpful to, uh, I think you have to conform it to everyone like this. So now if I drag it out again, you can see how the detail kind of conforms to the mesh a lot better. So definitely keep this in mind if you have IMMs and you just want to them um, to conform to the um, mesh a lot better for when you are booling something out or wanting to add that little extra. And that's it for volume two. I want to quickly jump into some shout outs to wrap up the series. Michael Pavlovich, you should definitely go check out more, more of his videos as they take up much deeper time into more technical hard type of zebra stuff. I also learned a lot of stuff from him, so go check him out. Cedric and Marco, they have some good content on their YouTube for extended learning, so go check out their tutorials and time lapses. Some of the tips from my video is what I learned from them. Daytona, he has some unique concepts and a short tutorial on how he does them with Zebras and Photoshop. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you got something out of this series and let me know what you want to see for future videos. Alright, until next time.